everyone, welcome to CEN. Happy Thanksgiving Sunday. We are here again to continue in our series of trusting God with our finances and serving God with our uh, riches and wealth. And today I want to teach one of the topics of this series, the principle of first. But I won't be able to finish this sermon today, so this will be just the half of the message. And the next Sunday, as I finish this series of chapter 6, will be the second half of this message. Because of time, because of the lunch that is re ready for us to enjoy today as Thanksgiving Fellowship, we're gonna, uh, I'm just going to give you the half of this message, the principle of first. And how we will, what we have learned so far. And why I brought this uh, teaching to you. Actually, in my s seven years here in this church, I never talk about money. Or I never teach about money. Because I didn't want to uh, give you the impression that we are asking for money. Actually, our church is not a poor church. It's a church who have people who uh, bless the church, bless the community that we have. And we are blessing others who are coming to our church also, and we are blessing one another. But there's a principle that is keeping in our church and all the Korean churches and the churches in the world that are mature to give God everything that God is, uh, is worthy to receive. Not only our worship and praises, but also our life, our bodies, our times, and why not, our money too. So, as we learn how to serve God, we have to learn also how to put God first in every circumstance in our life. And why don't we don't put God first in our finances too? So, trusting God in our finances, we, we started with this message this, in this series, is fundamental to live a life that will please God and that will honor God and will bring the kingdom of God to the earth. Because without putting God first and his kingdom first with our finances, then the kingdom cannot be extended. Therefore, we are not treasuring wealth or richness here in this world, on this planet, but we are putting our or storing treasures in heaven. And this treasure, this, this wealth, this richness that we have is no money, is no material things, is no talents that we accumulate. It's no uh, experience. And in, in, uh, they are not also the fruit of the Spirit. They are people. People that we evangelize. People that we reach out for the kingdom of God. Because the church or the kingdom of God is not a building. It's not a castle. It's not a, 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 a place. It's the people who are in the kingdom and the people who are in the church. We are the body of Christ we are the family of God. And that's why we, as we accumulate more souls, gaining by, by the power of the Holy Spirit to Christ, for Christ's glory, then we are treasuring more these souls in heaven. But as we are here serving the Lord in heirs, we have to be wise that we not make the mistake to put another master or another God before our God. The first commandment says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And the second one is, Love your neighbors as yourself. But there's no other place for other gods in our life. Actually, the second commandment said, Do not worship other gods. Do not make any idols. But in this chapter 6, the Lord Jesus warning us to not serve or try to serve two masters because that is impossible. It cannot naturally be possible to serve two masters. We're going to hate one and we're going to love the other one. We're going to despise one and we're going to misreward the other. So we cannot serve two masters. We cannot serve money and we cannot serve God at the same time. Now, money is not a God. But the spirit that is in money 
it can become a god. We can idolatrize money or we can idolatrize wealth and finances that we are inter putting our interest. If you are spend more time trying to figure out your life financially more than to prepare for eternity in your spiritual life, then you have to revise if you are not making an idol in yourself. If you are not having another kind of religion. Because just focus in your economic or your finances who become your religious life. And money could be your idol. So be careful to not serve to master. And the word serve, remember, as we say, is not the word like you are hired or you are volunteered to serve the one of these two masters. Actually, this word serves is for the slaves who have no rights, who have no uh, opinion in front of the master. They just obey and follow. And God said, you're going to serve God, then you have no complainings. You have no uh, questions of what he wants from you, even in your finances. You just give it to him because you know that everything that you have actually belongs to him first, in the first place. And then the Lord teaches and leads us to not worry about nothing, as we say the last week, but instead pray about everything. Yes. We don't need to worry. Because if God is for us, who can be against us? It's, if God is for, for us, there's no mammon who can be against us. There's no any finances crisis who could, could be against us. There's nothing in God's provision that could be against us. Actually, what the Bible says in, in the Psalms 23 is that we have a good shepherd. And that's why we have no lacks. And then Romans chapter 8, 28 say that, yes, God is war according to his purpose in our life. And this also includes our financial life. Now today, we'll continue with this teaching and know that God wants us to put him first in everything. The principle of peace. God is first. He always first and he will be always first. And he must be first in our life. So let's learn from today to put God first in our life and our finances. Now, as we read the scripture, the saying that we read the last week, I just want to focus in the last two verses because probably you, you feel like, okay, what was the conclusion the last week? You probably didn't get really what I tried to say at the end. So I just, because this is a series, so I, I not just finished one sermon in, in one week. So I will finish the next week because it's part of the series. But what we are continue learning from all these verses of chapter 6, actually in December, I'm going to start chapter 7 and we're going to conclude this thing, let your kingdom come from the curriculum that we have, the Sermon on the Mountain. So the Sermon on the Mountain is starting chapter 5 and finishing chapter 7. So we're going to finish this year with the last series of chapter 7 and then we're going to celebrate Christmas and New Year together and then it's going to pray to God to give us wisdom for the next year theme. So, we put God first in our life and this is a commandment of God. Whatever we do, we do it for the glory of God. God commands us to love God first and then to love our neighbors as ourselves. So, as we said the last week, if we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all those things that we are looking for in this life will be added to you. So the priority is to put first the kingdom of God. And we started this year preaching the same Bible verse. God first, the kingdom first, is all that we have to learn this year. And we can continue the rest of eternity, putting God first and the kingdom first. But remember that God is looking for those who wants to be in this kingdom. And he wants you to be a builder in his kingdom. We are kingdom's builders, but God wants you to create words, to make money, in other words. 
So money is not evil in sense, as we just say here. Money is neutral. Money can be used to bless God, people, God's kingdom, church, or can be used to try to get advantage of what we have from this world. And we can use this money in a good, blessed way or in a bad, cursed way. And we know if we don't do it in God's way, one day, sooner or later, we're going to face the crisis of our life. And we will start with our finances. And if you have crisis in your finances and you worship money rather than to worship God, your life will suffer, your family will suffer, your friends will suffer, and everything that is surrounding you will suffer. You will have not only a spiritual bankrupt, but also a material, physical, and emotional bankrupt. So God wants you to be a wealth creator. And he also wants you to be a kingdom builder. So God gives us the ability to create money. He gives you talent so you can make money. And it's the wisdom of God in you who will help you, the ability, the talents that he gives you to create money. But you remember are building the kingdom of God. Okay? You are not building your own kingdom with that money. People think that because we have money, now we are building our kingdom. No, that's the problem with those who accumulate wealth in this world. They think that the kingdom belongs to them. No, the kingdom belongs to God. We are building the kingdom of God, but God gives us the opportunity to create money for his kingdom, not for our kingdom, not for us. And that's the reason many people who fall into the temptation of accumulating wealth, they finally were found to worship Mammon, to worship another God. So we need a system of priorities. I'm going to talk about today about the systems of priority. But as we said last week, we need also an strategic program. I want to tell you how this strategic program will be. So the Bible 30, 30, the verse 34 says, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, but for tomorrow we worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So we don't worry about tomorrow, but we plan for tomorrow. That's what we say the last week. And I finished the sermon in that way. But you say, okay, what is the plan, Pastor? Give me the plan. <laughs> the plan, actually, you have to make it. But I'm going to give you some tips how to make this plan. Because God commands us to plan. God wants us to plan. And we, we don't plan. We're going to face tomorrow like, okay, what's going on? And without plan, you probably say, okay, but pastor, you say we shouldn't worry, and now we shouldn't worry, and we, did, we, don't, we are not worrying, and we are not planning. Well, Jesus said to us that we must plan. Financially, if we want to war, do a war, we have to plan how to go to war. If we want to build a tower, we have to plan how to build a tower. So Jesus is with us in planning. But Worry doesn't mean that we won't do anything. We're going to just cross our arms and wait that God will open the heavens and we just open our mouth and God will feed us. No. Actually, the Bible says the one who doesn't work should not eat too. So we are not creating lazy people by not worrying. But we are creating diligent people planning for every day, and for every week, and for every month and for every year, and for every decade, and for every period of life that we want to do something for God's glory. So, is money good or bad? No, money is neutral. We can make money good if we put the spirit, the good spirit of God on it, to multiply it, to add it according to his will. Or the evil spirit, the spirit of mammon, who will give, lead us to idolatry and to the spiritual crisis in our life. So, once in his book, R Purpose Living Life, Rick Warren says, money is a tool and is a test. Money in God's hand is a tool, but in your hands is a test. 
So God used money to test your gratitude and test your faith. God used money to test your priorities. And also God used money to test your values. He can test how responsible you are and how mature you are with money. And God can test your character just using money. So money is a tool in God's hand. But it's a test in your hand. You can use money for tools to bless others. Like God is blessing you. Or you can use money to test your character. If you are more like Jesus. Generous like God. A giver like God. And tight like God. Tight. So what we have to learn from today with this principle of first is that we are here to be trained in our spiritual discipline. So financial commitment or managing money is a spiritual discipline. Okay? So money should be a taboo or we don't, we don't need to be afraid to talk about money in church. Many pastors, they don't try to talk about money in church because of the sensitivity of people and because of the bad understanding of people who have listened. Many preachers on TV, many evangelists on TV asking for money in order to bless the people of God. And he's called it the prosperity gospel. And the prosperity gospel is just say that if you give money to God, God will bless you no matter what. Actually, the Bible doesn't say it. That and Jesus is against that, so the prosperity gospel is not biblical. And I'm here to tell you, I'm give and teaching you about God's finances. No, that you want to become a rich person, but God could be, could, God could bless your life by being faithful and committed in your finances with your money. So, managing money or having a financial commitment is a spiritual discipline. I want to make a parenthesis here to teach, especially foreign members or members who are not in our church, what are these envelopes that I have in my hand? Because here in Korea we have a discipline to train our members to give offerings, special offerings and tithes. And every envelope that we have here have a different purpose. And this is not just to make you think that, oh, now the pastor wants to check if we give money or not. They want to check on all of us. But this is for your spiritual training. We, in some way, yes, know who is giving and who is not giving. And I know, I know, that many foreigners different cultures, different countries, they don't want to put their names on this kind of envelopes because they want to be anonymous. They say, well, I'm giving to God. I don't need to put my name. But it is hard for church to manage your offerings if you are anonymous or you don't use a specific envelope. Why? Because as you see in our, con in our country, in our church, we have, for example, this one has said, Thanksgiving offering. And when you put your offering in this envelope, it will go to one specific department or a specific finances in our department in our, our church. There's another one that's called it Christmas offering. Then mission offerings and Thanksgiving Day offerings. And this one, I hope you memorize, this green one, is the tithe. Is the tithe. So these are for offerings, and this is for tithe. Now, when you see these offerings, for example, the mission offerings, it go to a specific department, the mission department. So your tithes won't go to this place. And this offering won't go to this department. The tithes, as the Bible says, is to feed the church, to feed the house of God, and to feed those who are serving in the house of God, and to manage and to take care of the house of God. 
But these other offerings are for other purpose, to bless the people of God. So that's why we have all these kind of envelopes in our church to train you to have a spiritual discipline. So you can know where your money is going and how you are serving God and how you are serving your church, your community, with your offerings and tithes. I'm going to talk about tithes the next week, but just to let you know, because maybe you didn't hear about and why we, uh, you didn't know why we have so many offerings in front of our uh, entrance. So, finances commitments or managing money is a spiritual discipline. And actually, Owas Chamber, who was in the early 20th century Scottish Baptist and Holiness Movement and Evangelist and teacher, he said, we can all see God in exceptional things, but it requires the culture of a spiritual discipline to see God in every detail. It's a spiritual discipline to see God in every detail. And what details are you? So once again, Offerings and tithes. We are talking about money. We are talking about finances. Can you see God in your money? Can you see God's hands in your finances? Can you see God's hands in your wealth? I'm not saying that you must be rich in order to see God's hand on you. But can you see God's faithfulness? Even the little penny or coin that you have from your incomes. Can you see God's faithfulness on it? Can you see God's provision on it? Can you see God's blessing on it? Can you see the spiritual discipline that God is giving you to manage everything that God puts in your hands? So in order to have a system of priority and a strategic program for our finances, I want to introduce you what the Pastor Rick Warren said to his congregation five years ago in the Destiny uh, Decade, Decade of Destiny. And he say, habits for having financial blessings. First things, or first habit to have financial blessing is to trust God as my source and supply. Actually, the Bible says in many different versions, according to the NLT, Romans 11:36. Everything comes from God and everything exists by His power. And everything is intended for His glory. So, we trust God because everything God comes from God. When Jesus said, do not worry what to dress, what to eat, what to, how to live, it's because God who gives us this life and who gives us this body, He is our source and He is our supplier. So we don't need to worry about tomorrow because we know that God is there always for us. The Deuteronomy, the Deuteronomy 8, 18 says, Always remember the Lord your God, for He is who gives you the ability to produce wealth. Proverbs 16.3 says, Commit your word to the Lord, and then your plans will succeed. Why? Because God is our provider, and because God is the source of our blessing. He's the source of our finances. And when we acknowledge that, we can bless God and we can bless His people. So, first habit, we have to trust God. That's what Jesus says in, in this chapter 6. Do not worry. And three times He said, do not worry. Second, do not work as, uh, do your work, do your work as an act of worship. Do your work as an act of worship. So if we trust God as our supplier and the source of our blessing, then everything that we do with the money is an act of worship. So worship is not just having this service every Sunday. Worship is whatever you do with your work, with your money, with your body, with your life, with your time. And in this case, with your, with your wealth and finances. So when you use your money, remember you are worshiping God. And God will bless you because you are worshiping him. Remember, after every worship, we have a benediction time. That's a blessing time. 
from above to you. And when you worship God with your money, he will bless you as part of his benediction to you. You will be blessed for planning, because the Bible said, good planning and hard work leads to prosperity, but hasty shortcuts leads to poverty. God will bless your native, because the Bible said, lazy hands make a man poor, but diligent hands brings wealth. Proverbs 10, 4. God will bless your integrity. The Bible says in Proverbs 16, 11, the Lord demands fairness in every business deal. He sets the standards. God will bless your focus if you focus on his kingdom. Hard work brings prosperity. Only foods waste time chasing fantasies. Proverbs 12, 11. And God will bless your persistence. Proverbs 13, 11 says, Well from get rich quick scans quickly disappear, but wealth from hard wars grows. And now, who wrote these Bible verses? It was written in the book of Proverbs. And who is the author of the book of Proverbs? According to the tradition, is Solomon. And who was Solomon? Solomon was one of the most famous kings in, in, in history. And according to the Bible, there was no like him before, and there will be no like him after. And he not only won one of the greatest kings in history, he also won one of the greatest rich in history. He was the most richest or wealthy people in his time. In his time. So this wisdom or these proverbs that are, uh, come from the book of wisdom come from one who was a king and who was, was a wealthy person. And if we are building a kingdom and we want to worship God with our wealth, better listen to Solomon. Because God will bless you. If you put your money or your finances as an ad of worship, he will bless you for planning, for being an initiative person, for being integr integrate, for have integrity, for having focus on his kingdom, and for be persistent. Actually, one day, Charles Spurgeon said in one of his uh, evangelist meetings in England, once he was preaching to the congregation, and Spurgeon was saying this in his sermon, and make all the money you can, and one person who was not attending church, who was a rich, no, a rich person, but a wealth person, he, with his wife, was listening to what Spurgeon said. And he said, make all the money you can. And then this man talked to his wife and said, I like this preacher. And then he continued, save all the money you can. And this man said to his wife, definitely he will be my pastor. And then he continued and said, and after you make all this money and save all this money, give it all to God. And then the wife said to this man, I like this pastor too. Yes. We are so busy trying to make money and to save money, but we don't want to give money to God. We think that all this money that we make and save belongs to us. But listen what Spurgeon said. He said, never try to save out of God's cause. Such money will canker the rest. Giving to God is no loss. It is putting your sustenance in the best bank. Giving is true having, as an all gravestones say of the dead man. What I spend had. What I saved, I lost. What I gave, I have. So this British Baptist evangelist said, we are here to make all the money that we have with the ability that God gave us and to save and accumulate all the wealth in this world for having treasures in heaven, for extending the kingdom of God, as we give all this money that we save and, and make 
to the benefit of the church, the body of Christ. Third habit that we have to develop or to add in our life is to keep good records. Yes, Proverbs 23, 27, 23, 24 says, Riches can disappear fast. So watch your business interests closely. Know the states of your flocks and herds. Corinthians 16, 2 says, On the first day of every week, put aside some of what you have earned during the week and use, and use it for the offering. The amount depends on how much the Lord has helped you earn. So focus in these two words. Know the states and put aside. In other words, keep good records of what you are doing with your money. If you know where this money is going, then we have records here in church where your, find, where your blessings are going to bless our church. So we keep records. And we keep records with your name so we know that, yes, you are growing spiritually. You are becoming more mature Christians. And you are not saying, oh, I'm going to give my, my tithes to Africa because there are more people who are in need in Africa than here in this church because this church has more money than people there. If you think like that, you are still not understanding how God works. And God works with his people. God works with church. And we can bless many people who are in need if we know how to get to them. And we can be ready to help them with your blessings. Number four, give the first 10% back to God. Proverbs 3, 9, 10 says, Honor the Lord by giving him the first part of your income, and he will fill your barns to overflow. Deuteronomy 14, 23, the purpose of tithing is to teach you always to put God first in your life. Malachi 3, 10, as you know already, this Bible verse says, bring my storehouse a full tenth of you of what you earn. Test me in this, say the Lord. I will open the windows of heaven for you and pour out all the blessings you need. So what we are doing or what we are developing, not only with our offerings, with our tithes and our finances for the kingdom of God, is to just supply the needs for those who are in need, but also to develop a character, the gratitude, a character to put God first, priority, and a character to increase our faith. That's why Jesus said, in chapter 6, do not worry about all these sins, you little faith. Why did Jesus say that to his disciples? You little faith. Because he knew that because people are worried so much about money, their faith, instead to increase, are decreasing. And if we don't put God first, and if we don't do the first things first, that is to give the tithe to God, I can tell you, your faith won't grow. Try in this way, God. Because this is the only way that God said, test me. If you give your tithes to God, He will increase your faith, your finances, and everything that is involved in your life. Let's go quickly to number five. We're almost to finish this time. Save and invest for the future. Save and invest for the future. Proverbs 3, uh, Proverbs 21, 20. The wise man save for the future, but the foolish man spend whatever he gets. Proverbs 13, 11. Money that comes easily disappears quickly. Money that is gathered little by little will grow. And Proverbs 24, 27 says, Develop your business first before building your house. So let's take the advice of Solomon. Because money should war for you, but you shouldn't war for money. So people are here in this world just investing and saving 
for money, for capitalization. And, and once again, capitalization is the mother or the current religion in this, in this world. And money is the idol. Money is the god. It's called the mammon. So people war for money instead of let money war for people. So we need to save, to separate the seed for the next harvest. To be wise like Joseph, to, to, to accumulate in the years of plenty, because the years that we will have famine, we will have probably resources. And we need to save for that time, and we need to invest for that time. When we have tests in our finances, because tests will come. But if we are wise to let our money work, then we, need, we don't need to worry about tomorrow. Number seven, six, set up a repayment plan. Set up a repayment plan. Proverbs 3.27, don't withhold repayment of your debts. Romans 38, let no debt remain outstanding. So let's set up a repayment plan. Let's not accumulate debts in us. Let's be clear and blue in our finances instead to be black, uh, red or black in our finances. Many people are worried because they have debts, debts and more debts. If you know that you have a salary and an amount of income, don't use more than your incomes are. In other words, don't Extend your credit card more than is fixed. Don't let your credit card go over or beyond your salaries for the next month. Because you won't have money to pay your, your credits. So don't withhold repayment of your debts. Number seven, budget your spending. Budget your spending. Proverbs 21.5 21, says, Plan carefully and you will have plenty. If you add too quickly, you will never have enough. Proverbs 10, 16. The earning of the, go the godly enace their life, but evil people enquander their money on sin. 21, 20 says, stupid people spend their money as fast as they get it. This is a TEV version. So let's have a budget of spending. Don't get easy to get involved in home shopping. I know I'm, I'm touching sensitivity to people here who love to watch home shopping. Sooner or later, you're going to fall into temptation. And if you are shopping once without knowing how much budget you have for the rest of the months or for the next month, you're going to accumulate debts. And you're going to face yourself in financial crisis, not because God didn't bless you, but because you didn't use his blessing well. Number eight, enjoy what you have. This is the last one. Enjoy what you have. Ecclesiastes 6, 9 says, It is better to be satisfied with what you have than to always be wanting something else. Timothy 6, 1 Timothy 6, 18 says, Tell them to use their money to do good. They shall be rich in good works and shall give generously to those in need, always being ready to share with others whatever God has given them. So, enjoy what you have. And be generous. God said, if you are generous, he will open the heaven's blessings and give you more than you need. So, many people are confused about tithing and offering. Why? Because they say, oh, I offering, and this is the same like my tithe. Or I tithe, is the same my offering. Now, the tithe belongs to God. You are just returning to God what God gives you. But the offering is how you bless the people of God. And if you are generous, doesn't mean that you are just giving your tithe. Generous is what you have to do in your spiritual discipline. Be generous is to extend 
your capacity of giving for God's kingdom's purpose and God will bless you more for continue blessing other people. That's what I plan to preach next week, but I just want to give you this. When I, this is a secret of, of my, my, my blessing. In my 20 years here in Korea, I went from teaching in kindergartens, academies, schools, TV, uh, trade companies, etc. I have many kind of experience in many kind of offices in, in Korea. But every time I was interviewed for a job, people asked me, how much money or how much salary do you want? And because they always ask me these questions, I had to be prepared. And I said to them, well, I want, depends on that time, so 20 years, salary is not the same like this day. So I say, well, I want this amount of money. That is a very above my capacity and, and what is the salaries, uh, the current salaries in, in, in this society. And they say, okay, well, we're going to call you back after we study your curriculum and, and we decided to, to hire you or not. Then when I give this proposals of salary, I don't just ask him my salary. I just ask him my incomes plus my tithes. My income plus my tithes. So before I enter to a job, I already know how much I want to give to God and how much I want to offer to God. So people in this, in this world, they don't tie or they don't, do, they don't give offering because they say, oh, my salary is not enough. I don't have enough to give to church. I don't have enough to give to tithe. Why? Because you just calculate your salary for your life needs. And you don't calculate for blessing the church and blessing God's people. And you are always in lack because you have not enough. And that's why you don't tithe and that's why you don't give offerings. Because you are always in lack. But if you ask and you pray, because I, every time I, I have a new job, I say, God, do you want me to work here? So then, then, then approve my salary proposed and the position I ask him. So, of course, there's a tricky part. I always give a, 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 a little, uh, what is that in mathematics, a, rain, a space that if they don't like my proposal, they will drop probably a little hundreds on my salary. And they, they, I know they always do that because they don't say that, okay, well, if probably if they have higher salaries than I expected, they will say immediately, yes, okay, we will hire you. But if, in that case, that company, they don't pay much salary. They will come with a response. Well, we want to hire you, but we can offer you only this. So I always let some kind of hundreds of space to uh, give it the opportunity to the, the company to think about what I'm asking for. But it, in all this, I calculate my tithes already and I calculate my offerings already. So this is my tip for you because I love you and give you free. So I, I, other churches and other people pay me for preaching this but because I love you and you're my friends, I give you these tips. <laughs> so remember, enjoy what you have. And be wise in your investment. Ask God for provision. And don't be like non-Christian. Because that's what Jesus said. And let's gonna finish this message today by giving you this comparison. Don't be like the pagans, said Jesus. And verse 32 says, For the pagans run after all these sins, and you, Heavenly Father, knows that you need them. So what people do with their money is this. They spend it, they worry about it, they repay it, and they save it, and they give it. This is the order that people do with their money. But look what kingdom people do with God's blessing. When in the world people spend money, we Christians, we dedicate it to God. 
When people in this world, they worry about money, we tie it. When people in this world, they repay money, we save and invest. When people in this world save money, we just repay it. And when people give money, we enjoy to give money. See the difference? People of this world and the kingdom people. Jesus said, don't be like pagans. Don't be like the word in, 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 in the, the, the King James Version is Gentile. But this word in Greek is egnos. And it means a, a, a common culture of people. A common culture of people. And, and Jesus said, don't be like this kind of culture of people. What kind of people? People who always focus on money. People who idolatry money. People who religion is finances life or economy or, or, or capitalism. We are not like them. We are building a kingdom, the kingdom of God, and God is giving us the ability to make wealth, money, riches in this world, so we can have treasures in heaven. We don't worry about money because we are working for God. We are not working for this world. God is blessing us. God is with us. And if God is with us, who can be against us? If God is in charge of our supplies, who can destroy God's supplies? So, let's continue with teaching of the principle of first next week. But remember what Jesus said. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that you worry, that you're planning, that you're looking for, will be given to you in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for giving us this Thanksgiving Sunday, Lord, opportunity to listen 